This video is designed to help you understand what bias is and how to identify it in sources of information so that you can be in control of your own opinions. Let's start with what bias is. Bias is a preconceived opinion on a subject. That means it's the author's opinion about the topic they're writing about. It's important to know what this is because it creates a message about the subject. If we're not paying attention to it, we could take that message and it could become our own opinion. The other important part is that bias is in everyone. We always have to be paying attention to it, not only in what we read, but in our own opinions. We have our own bias when we read things too. So the question is, is bias in everything? The answer is yes. It's almost impossible to completely take opinion out of something. Is it always bad? Not necessarily. If it's a source of information like a newspaper, it should have as little bias as possible. Strong bias and sources of information are bad. However, if the purpose of the writing is to persuade, then bias is not something that's necessarily wrong. Because they're not telling us that they're giving us factual information and it's clear what their purpose is, it's okay to include their opinion on it because that's the purpose of the writing. So make sure you know what is the purpose of the writing. If it's to inform you and there's lots of bias in it, be careful. So let's look at the different ways we can spot bias. One is word choice and connotation. Two, names and titles. Three, placement and size. Four, selection and omission. And five, images and videos. We'll break those down a bit more. The first one, word choice and connotation, simply means the emotions and feelings associated with words. If there are lots of very strong words used that have powerful opinions and feelings behind them, we should be very careful in identifying the bias there. So let's look at this example. The audience clapped when the president announced his new plan. The underlined word clapped is a fairly objective word there. It's simply describing what happened. If we said the audience seemed content, that's a subjective opinion that may show a negative feeling that they weren't very excited. Showed approval is a little bit more positive, but still could be negative. Cheered and applauded shows a very positive association. And now roared with excitement is even stronger. So these words, the feelings behind them could help us identify the bias in that source of information. Let's look at this example. The young teen was unaware of the seriousness of his actions. Think about these different words instead of young, innocent, naive, rebellious, and accused. All of these words would change our opinion of the person. This is what bias is. And this is why we need to pay attention to the feelings and emotions associated with words and, and be on the lookout for strong language so that we can identify bias when it shows up. The second way to identify bias is through names and titles. This simply means how people are referred to. Think about this example. If someone in an article is called the criminal versus the man accused of a misdemeanor, this shows the opinion towards that person. The criminal would be a negative opinion. The man accused of a misdemeanor is a more neutral or positive opinion. Think about this one. Former President Bill Clinton is an objective, objective description versus the impeached former president, while still a fact, referring to him in that way is a much more negative opinion of the subject. That choice could sway our opinion if we're not careful. Same with this, the intentional choice to refer to someone in a specific way is designed to change our opinion, so we need to be paying attention to how people are referred to and what they're called. Third, placement and size. When looking at a news source, it's important to know the placement and size of pieces of information because it shows what the news source thinks is important. If something is at the very bottom or back, it's saying that this information is not important. At the front or the top, the news source is showing their opinion of what's important. If it's small, same, not important. And if it's large, it's showing it's important. So by identifying what the news source thinks is important, we can identify their opinion of certain topics. The next one is difficult, selection or omission. This is simply what the article chooses to include or leave out. It's asking, are we getting the whole story? The best way to check this is to read multiple sources. If you're only reading one source, there's no way to know if they left something out. 
However, if you check multiple sources, you'll start to notice if they're leaving out certain facts or information. That could help us identify bias. Lastly is the use of images and videos. Notice these two examples. These are two pictures of Michael Brown who was shot in Ferguson. The picture on the left, if used by the media, conveys a positive image of Michael Brown. If the image on the right is used in the media, it could identify a bias that is negative towards this person. Let's look at these images from the protests after that happened. Think about the different messages that are being sent in each image. When we're looking at a news source, it's very important that we pay attention to the images and videos used so that we can identify the message that they are trying to communicate through those images. Let's use this as an example. This screenshot can help us identify how bias shows up. Can you identify different places where bias might be appearing? Let's think about word choice. Chaos, slams, and blasts all have very strong feelings associated with them. They're strong language. The choice to include hell in a handbasket as the quote also is an example of possible bias through selection of that quote. Let's look at another example. Can you identify how bias might appear in this one? Notice the image used. It's not a very positive image of the subject. One of the bigger things on the page, lack of intelligence, has a negative association with it. And a lot of the word choice in here is very strong and very negative. So let's review the different ways we can spot bias. One, word choice and connotation. Is the article using strong language that conveys specific emotions or feelings? Names and titles. Are people referred to fairly and accurately or are there feelings behind the way it's, they're referred to? Placement and size, what are they calling important and what are they calling unimportant? Selection and omission, are they giving us the whole story or are they leaving things out? And images and videos, how might they be trying to sway our opinion based on the images or videos being used? With that, hopefully you're well equipped to go out and be critical consumers of information to be in control of your own opinion.